All right, uh, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, I want to start off by saying uh, all praise, honor, and glory given to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. In the Hebrew, that's Kal Hala Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai. Bashim Rokaku Dash. Okay, uh, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And uh, peace and mercy to the brothers that are doing the work of the Lord. Uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, sincerely and in truth, um, throughout the four corners of the earth. Okay, now I want to do uh, you know, a video here. You know, because I had uh, recently watched uh, the one video uh, the brothers out there in um, in D.C., you know, and they had a ex-camp uh, member, you know, who pretty much came back, you know, talking nonsense, you know, and pretty much uh, Old Testament believers only, okay, and they don't believe in Yahweh Shai, you know, they're pretty much saying that Yahweh Shai, uh, you know, was gay, you know, or whatever the hell, you know, they come up with, okay, that's what happens when the Lord takes away that oil from you, man. Okay, the Lord would have you believe in Him. Okay, in one moment, you know, but if you're not a part of the elect, the Lord will take that oil away from you and take that spirit, and then you bug up, man, and then you come against the Lord. And then guess what's going to happen when Yahweh Shai returns? He's going to come and cut your fucking head off, man. Okay, because you're being wicked. Okay, so, you know, these uh, Old Testament, you know, believers only, you know, there's plenty of scriptures, you know, the prophesy of Yahweh Shai. In the Old Testament, man, there's plenty. Okay, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna bring out, you know, I'm, a, you know, I'm a just a few of them, but there's lots and lots of scriptures that pretty much prophesize, you know, uh, the coming of Yahweh Shai, you know, and the things that Yahweh Shai was gonna do, etc., etc. Okay, there's plenty, like I said. Now, you know, I just want to start off um, with the Book of Samuel, okay, uh, Second Samuel, just to show you. That this was speaking of your Havoshai, man. Okay, and I'm gonna bring out the precepts in the New Testament, okay, that backs up what the Old Testament pretty much spoke of. Okay, this is the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verse 12. Okay, now this is talking, you know, to King David, and it says, And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. And with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him. As I, t as I took it from Saul. Whom I put away before thee. Okay. So pretty much. You know the Lord. Uh, used Nathan. You know to pretty much talk to King David. And tell him that he was going to set up his son after him. Okay. Which shall build a house for the Lord Yahweh. Okay. And that son was King Solomon, okay? But, you know, the scriptures, you know, pretty much talks about reincarnation, man, okay? And it, and and again, you know, and if you will receive it, you know, King Solomon is who you call Jesus Christ, is Yahweh Shai in a reincarnation, okay? Now, to prove that, I'm going to bring out another precept, you know, which pretty much backs up what this is saying. Now, I'm going to read it again, verse 12. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Okay? The precept for that is in the book of Luke. You know, I wrote down here. This is the book of Luke. Chapter 1, I'll start from verse 31, okay? And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashai. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord Yahweh shall give unto him the throne of his father David, Okay? Let me read this again here in the book of 2 Samuel. 
And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Okay? Over here, Luke 1, verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Okay? This is the angel Gabriel talking to uh, Miriam. Okay? Mary, Salakia. You know, Yahawashah's mother. Okay? And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. And bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashai. Verse 32. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. Over here, Second Samuel 1 verse, it's like the 2nd Samuel 7 verse 14. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. Okay. Back here in Luke 1 verse 32. He shall be great, he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord... Yahweh shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom shall be no end. And his kingdom there shall be no end. Okay? That's talking about Yahweh Shai, man, in the Old Testament, for you people who don't believe in Yahweh Shai. Okay? So cold cut, man. You know, I'm going to bring out another precept. This is in the book of Isaiah, chapter 42. Isaiah 42, verse 1. Behold, my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him, he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. Okay, you got people who use this uh, scripture to pretty much back up uh, that they don't have to go out there in the house and the Bible to push this truth. But that's not what that means. Okay, and it says he shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoke flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto the truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Okay? A precept to that, which is in the New Testament, okay, to show that this was talking about Yahawashai, okay? It's in the book of Matthew, chapter 12. Matthew, chapter 12, verse... Let me start from verse 15, okay? Matthew 12, verse 15. This is a precept to Isaiah 42, verse 1 and down. But when Yahawashai knew it, he withdrew himself... From thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold, my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him. And he shall show judgment to the Gentiles, okay? He shall not he shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and smoking flask shall he not quench till he sent forth judgment unto victory, and in his name shall the Gentiles trust. A Gentile is talking about the children of Israel, man, okay? Uh, the children of Israel who don't know that they're Israelites. But the point of that, okay, was that this was prophesied in the book of Isaiah. And it, and it even says in the verse 17 that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have loved, whom, whom, 
So I can behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Okay, he shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. Okay, meaning that Yahweh wanted to, you know, whatever, you know, um, the Lord Yahweh did, you know, he told the people that he healed to keep it with them, man. Okay, but what did they do? They went out there, you know, and pretty much, you know, I'm going to spread the news, man. You know, Yahweh healed me. Okay, and then, you know, that's just going to draw more attention. And that's not, you know, what Yahweh wanted, man. Okay, and that's why I said that, you know, his voice was not going to be heard in the streets. Now, let me read it again here in the book of Isaiah 42. Okay, he shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the streets. Who was that talking about? I was talking about Yahweh, man, in the book of Isaiah. Okay, another, another precept, you know, uh, which backs that up too, is in the book of... Uh, let me read this in the book of uh, Matthew, okay? In the New Testament, Matthew chapter 8, verse, I'm going to start from verse 14, but verse 17 is the point. Matthew 8, verse 14. And when Yahweh was come to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever, and he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his with his word and healed all that were sick. Verse seventeen, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses okay now let's get that in the book of isaiah you know which backs up exactly what that you know was talking about the book of isaiah chapter 53 verse 1 who hath delivered our report and to whom is the arm of the lord revealed for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground he has no form nor comeliness, and when he shall, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely. He hath bore our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we did yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed okay what did it say in the book of matthews it says right here matthews 8 verse 17 that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses this that was spoken in the book of isaiah 53 was fulfilled man okay okay and it tells you right here in the book of uh, matthew the uh, eighth chapter man so there's plenty of scriptures that proves that Yahweh was prophesied in the Old Testament. Man, you got people who say that Yahweh is not, you know, and he was never in the Old Testament. Man, okay, that goes to show you, you know, that these people don't want to deal in order. Man, the scriptures, you know, pretty much tells us that the order of things is Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, his son, is in second command. Okay, the man and then the woman, that's the order of things. You got people who want to go from, you know, being the man, you know, all the way to the top, man. Okay, they want to deal with Yahweh straight up. Okay, you can't do that, man. Okay, you cannot do that. The scriptures, you know, pretty much talks about how there's no any, there's no any other way to get to the Father but through Yahweh, man. Okay, 
but you know like i said there's a lot of scriptures you know but you know these are just you know the few you know that i brought out but there's plenty of scriptures that prophesy yahweh shai you know in the old testament man okay but with that i hope you brothers were edified as i was you know and i want to give all the praise honor and glory due to yahweh bashin al shai bashim rokakudash double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone and i peace and mercy for you brothers that are doing the work of the lord yahweh bashim al shai in sincerity and in truth Endure the Lord Yahweh Shemoshai is on this way. And until next time, Shalom.